Hello, beautiful friends. It's Erica. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the lesser known aspects of the Divine Feminine. Um, the sides of her that maybe mm, you don't get to see or that very few people get to see. And similar to the video I did um, yesterday for the Divine Masculine, we're going to be doing this for the Divine Feminine. So this will be a helpful video to understand more of her and what people, kind of what goes on under the surface that a lot of people don't have visibility to. Whether you are watching this for a relationship, partnership of some kind, a friendship, a family relationship, or simply to understand yourself better, the feminine aspect of self. Um, I definitely recommend watching the masculine reading as well. Um, if you are on a soul growth journey and interested in just some messages of support and, um, and a lot of times validation for what, what you go through on your journey. So um, there will be an extended where I go more in depth. Um, the link will be down in the description box below. So we're going to start off tuning into the energy of the Divine Feminine and what she wants to say. Kind of these more intricate and less visible aspects of self. Okay. So starting off, we have the Three of Wands, the High Priestess. And the judgment card. Wow. Okay. So what she's starting off by sharing. She's saying many people assume that I sit there staring at the stars, wishing on a star, hoping and waiting for my masculine to arrive. And that I have all the answers and that I have all the wisdom. And the knowing of what is going to happen. And because of this, they think I sit and I stare out at the sky, waiting loyally for my divine masculine to arrive. Yet they also assume that there is this energy of wanting to be reborn. Their assumption of me is that I see the light and that I know I see the light. And their perception of me is that I may seem like I have been chosen by the divine. That somehow I am the special one, the anointed one, the sacred feminine that is bathed by the light. And a lot of people judge me for my faith and my path. And they may look upon me with judgment, with scorn. And they assume that I sit and I sacrifice myself to this journey and that I am somehow hypnotized by it. Yet in reality, what you don't see Two of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, and the Star. Is that I know that there is a purpose for why I am here. That I often vacillate back and forth between staying aligned with my destiny and my path and waiting for that moment
when union arrives. And while I have faith in the sacred plan, I struggle with doubts, with fears, with the darker energies that sometimes try to envelop me. Sometimes I feel like I'm living in two different worlds, two different realities. The reality that I'm in and the reality that I'm manifesting. Yet I'm deeply committed to my healing journey. And I know that I am here at this time to follow the light, to learn the light, and to remain aligned with my soul and sacred contract, not only with the divine masculine, but with my mission. And so I am of two worlds. Sometimes I feel indecisive, unknowing, uncertain. I worry that around any next corner, something will come and prevent me from my union, my path, my destiny. And it is hard for me at times because I understand as above, so below. And sometimes I struggle with knowing the truth, knowing manifestation has already occurred. Yet I'm living in the 3D. in a world where the tangible is far more acceptable than the unseen. Nine of Pentacles, the Hanged Man. The Emperor. And I'm going to get on this side too before I tune into these messages. Queen of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, the Hierophant. Oh, I'm so drawn to the colors of these three cards. Beautiful. So she's saying, I know while many of you may look upon me and think that if I just wait, that I think that if I just wait long enough, I stay stuck in my life, stuck in limbo for long enough that my masculine will arrive. And I know that many of you think that the way I see myself is that the only thing that can melt my heart would be my divine masculine. I know you believe me to think of myself as independent, very independent. Yet 
your perception of me is that I, I feel like I don't need anybody other than the masculine. And that I don't want anybody other than the, other than the masculine. And that I may ice others out waiting and waiting where I may be missing opportunities. I know that you think that I am naive. Giving my power away on this journey. Yet what I, how I really see myself is a very kind, loving, feminine energy. And I know that my part is to cooperate with the greater plan, to cooperate with divine will. And that eventually I will be success, successful if I work together with the divine. And in reality, I see myself as much more earth than you perceive. There is a warmth and a kindness of me that many people may not see. I know that there are many layers of consciousness, yet I am here in the earthly realms, in the 3D, intended. To thrive in Gaia's presence. I know that I have important work to do, yet I know that I am not the one in charge. Sometimes you perceive me potentially even as the authority that I know what I'm talking about and I know what I'm doing and I'm in charge of this journey, but I know that I'm not. I know that I'm a part of it. I know I'm an integral part of it. Yet I am not in charge the way that you think that I think I am. Five of Wands, the Chariot, Justice. Let me get this on as well. King of Wands, the Devil, the Four of Wands. So there's a part of what you perceive that I regret. I'm going to tell you what I really regret about my journey. I know that you see me as someone who may regret feeling that there is a masculine who needs to fight for me. I really feel, and I know that you perceive me as regretting the fact that any conflicts 
were meant to lead to success and victory. Yet at the end of the day, things don't always work out. Yet what I really deeply regret that you don't know about is the fact that I somehow thought that the masculine would do something before I addressed my shadow, before I really focused on my healing. Because when I ignored my shadow, I was living in an illusion. And I regret not knowing this sooner. Here I was thinking that the manifestation would just happen because my masculine would fight for me and come forward and bring justice and balance and harmony to our connection. Yet what I didn't realize was how much work I needed to do, how much I needed to work on in myself. And I feel like I wasted a lot of time in thinking that the masculine would approach me when I still had a lot more healing to do. And I deeply regret the times that I allowed my shadows to play out in ways that the masculine on a soul level knew he had to stay away from while I worked through them. Yet I deeply regret the feeling that he had to do something and I was merely to stand in my light and he would see me. Yet my masculine truly had the ability to see my darkness. And he knew on a soul level that he was meant to stay away in order to give me opportunity to work on my shadow and my healing. I just thought things would magically happen because I was in my light. And while I was in my light, where I had ignored my shadow became too big to ignore. And I regret judging the masculine for turning his back on me when he did. But he was correct in doing this on a soul level, on a spiritual level. Because I now know that when the feminine is in her light and has addressed her shadow, the masculine turns around and walks towards the feminine. And I know that it is in his turning his back to the feminine that is a loving gesture, allowing me to grow, to see sides of myself and to turn the focus back to me instead of to him. Eight of Pentacles, the world, the King of Wands with the Princess of Wands. This is what
people's perception is of her, and this is what really goes on inside of her. Strength, the Five of Cups, and the Sun. And I know what people perceive that I am scared of and what scares me. Is that I am going to be waiting and waiting and waiting for the masculine to arrive. And that the journey will come to an end. And I know that you think that what scares me is the fact that after all this time I've dedicated to work on myself, to focus on my growth, to reach this beautiful place, that at the end of the day, that there will come a time where I have to make a decision of do I wait Or do I leave? And while it is never my choice to wait, there is a difference between waiting and knowing. Yet what I'm really afraid of and what really scares me on this journey is that I may not, and my masculine may not, have the courage to break out of shame, regret, and that my real chance for happiness, that I'm missing my chance for happiness in my life. And what really scares me is that Am I holding myself back from my true happiness because I still feel and believe that union with my masculine is on my journey? And is this going to be a perpetual thing? At what point do I break what seems like a never-ending cycle. While I believe that I'm being guided and led, at what point am I holding myself back from happiness? Because I know I'm meant to live in joy and abundance and happiness. And what scares me is wanting to trust the divine. Yet at the same time, wondering at what point is there something else that I'm missing that I'm supposed to be seeing. And sometimes I feel like this energy is so split. I know my truth. I know what I'm being shown. And at the same time, sometimes I feel a frustration. I want to be happy. I am aligned and having faith in the divine. Yet I do fear deep down the 
that this love is not going to stack up or live up to the past. And what I'm afraid of is that maybe when my union comes, that it's not going to be all that the divine has guided me to. And that maybe the regrets of the past, the pain of the past, will outweigh the love that is remaining. Wow. So my friends, um, there are some of the inner workings of the Divine Feminine. So I hope that this has been helpful. I will be heading over to the Extended now where we go more in depth into her perception and what she admires about the masculine, what she considers to be her biggest life challenge and what she's done about it. What does she cry about? What keeps her up at night? What motivates her in love? And what matters her to her the most? So if you choose to join me, the link is down below. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. YouTube likes that in terms of helping other people find the video. So I would appreciate it if you find it in your heart to give back. If you have found any of my videos helpful, I would really appreciate it. And until next time, I send you so much love. Bye.